Just in case you woke up this morning and thought to yourself, I don't have enough wrestling in my life, All Elite Wrestling has a brand new show known as AEW Dark. And before you get on it, just don't, just don't, I understand. Why is it called AEW Dark when you're talking about dark matches? But now it can't be a dark match because it's on YouTube. It's the world. It's just how things operate in 2019. You have to accept it and you have to calm down. Also, I didn't name the show. I am just the messenger. You don't shoot the messenger. Anyway, with that tangent aside, you know what we like to do here on What Culture Wrestling. We like to use our eyes and watch professional wrestling. Then when we're done, give our opinions because that's what we do on the internet. We do that using the finger of power that I can't even control. We give good bits and we give the bad bits a down. That's right, the first thing I just said there was gibberish, but we're gonna do it anyway. Let's up those doubts. AEW started with Tony Schiavone in a studio and straight away I was in love with all of this because I felt like a kid again because when I was a kid I used to watch World Championship Wrestling where Schiavone would kind of do this stuff or WCW. And as always remember I only do that because it winds some people up and I enjoy the fact that it winds them up. I'm just a massive arsehole. Anyway Tony was here to let us know we were about to see Darby Allen versus Shima and it was alright by me. Give it up. I'm not sure if this was intentional or if it's going to be an ongoing thing, but there seemed to be a vibe here that as they weren't on proper, proper TV, they were going to do a few things that maybe you wouldn't have seen otherwise. For example, before the match even begun, Darby Allen was in the corner being all like, oh, I'm sad and I'm just chilling out here like Raven circa 1998. So Chima was like, well, I just heard the bell. I'm going to launch myself at you and drive my knees right into your face. That's what he did. Darby retaliated by doing approximately 543 suicide dives. But here's the thing with that. I think we can all agree that we do see this move too much in professional wrestling. It's about as commonplace as a headlock takeover. But you do have to listen to your crowd and react accordingly. And after Darby Allen had done two, they broke out saying, do more, do more. So he did one more. And then even then, the audience was begging for him to continue doing this. Thankfully, he didn't. I think sometimes you just got to draw a line under it. But hey-ho, when you do that and you get the relevant response, you probably did something right. Alan went for his coffin drop, which he absolutely misses more than he hits, although he did make up for that in but a few minutes. And at one point, because Alan decided to work on Shima's knees, do you know what he did? He started headbutting him in that area, right? Who comes off worse in that situation? If I take my skull and I drive it into somebody's leg, especially the hard bit in the middle, surely that hurts me and also... Look, if someone came up to you and said, you have to lose your knees or you have to lose your skull, you would say, look, take away my knees because I can probably do better without that. But that's Darby Allen for you. He is one crazy tamale. There was some back and forth after that, but ultimately, yes, Darby Allen did hit his code red and then finally executed the coffin drop how it's meant to be. He landed right on Chima's ass and that was that. One, two, three. Darby Allen now, of course, has a match with Jimmy Havoc on Dynamite tonight, and Tony Schiavone was back up telling us this, and the winner of that goes on to the following week to take on Chris Jericho in a World Championship match. I mean, what kind of craziness is this? And it was then the Lucha Bros, Jack Evans and Angelico taking on Private Party and the Best Friends. And if you do enjoy frantic tag team wrestling, this one was for you. Give it up. I mean, honestly, if I tried to tell you all of the moves that happened in like the first few minutes of this, I probably would take up the rest of this video. It was like we were in the back and somebody came up to all eight dudes and said, look, man, unfortunately, your wrestling match is now the movie equivalent of speed. And if you slow down beyond this point, I am just going to blow up the ring. All the guys were like, well, we don't really want to be exploded. We'd rather be alive. And boy, howdy, did they live up to their end of the bargain. It was Madness. Even with that, my favourite part was when Jack Evans stopped the best friends from hugging by just giving them a flipping back elbow out of nowhere. And in second place to that is when Orange Cassidy, who of course had come out with the best friends, was outside trying to calm everybody down. But unfortunately he did that by sticking his hands in his pocket. That left him, you know, open for a punch. So Jack Evans was like, okay, I'm going to punch you in the face. Which he did. It meant for a while Jack Evans was stealing the show here until Orange decided he would like that reward for himself. So he climbed up to the top rope. He still had his hands in his pockets and then he just launched himself off 
and careered into everybody. I mean, professional wrestling, man, you can get over by putting your hands in your pockets. But isn't that why we love this crazy thing? It wasn't a good day, though, for Chuck Taylor or Trent Beretta, because they were on the losing end of things here after the Lucha Brothers had absolutely decimated them and then given them the package power driver to make sure that they won. I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, I'd have to get some kind of chart out. I don't think the Lucha Brothers have lost yet in AEW. They go in right to the top. Now, of course, they have, and I've forgotten something, and you all are mad in the comments. Look, I watch a lot of wrestling. Some things just get out of my brain. The action kept on coming, which makes sense. AEW Dark is just a one hour, 60 minute show on YouTube. Right, you know, you can't have much palaver here. And it was B Priestley teaming up with Penelope Ford, who was taking on Ali and Britt Baker. And before we get into that proper, gotta give it a down. Why? Well, because unlike other matches on Dark, the crowd here was absolutely dead. And I did go out and I did do a bit of research. And that's because some of these bouts were filmed before Dynamite and others were filmed after Dynamite. And of course, if you manage to get the short straw, which is being filmed after Dynamite, you are going to wear your audience out. But still, it was very notable here. It took away some of the like hoopla from proceedings. That's why I gave it that down. And it's not a major criticism, by the way. It happens. Everybody needs downtime and everybody needs time to rest. But like I say, the atmosphere got sucked out of the room. It was a decent match though, and I like the fact that we had some story here, even though it was a dark match that now is no longer a dark match. As you probably guessed, the major focus was on B Priestley and Britt Baker, because they've got a proper feud going on. And we even had some old school heel shenanigans here, because B was all like, oh, tagging Baker, tagging Baker. So Ali did, she tagged her in, and then he was like, I don't want anything to do with that. And she tagged out, and she ran away. And yeah, 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 it wasn't the smoothest thing in the world. And the only reason I say that is because there was one mistake. And boy, howdy, we can't have one mistake in a wrestling match without the internet absolutely going crazy about it. Although, remember, we're all human and it happens. And by the time that all four women were in the ring and hitting each other with big moves, I actually thought this was quite entertaining. Isn't it weird in wrestling that we always do that? Eventually, we have a tag team match. Everybody will get in the ring, and then it's like, you do a move, and I'll do a move. And I understand, no, don't even worry about it. The point is up. It came to a close when Baker got forward in some kind of stretch hold on the floor, like it was a bit like a cross face and abdominal stretch. But to make her tap out, she got her hand, I should do that, put it in her mouth, and just ripped at her jaw. I guess because you know she's also a dentist, but I tell you. That was a pretty devastating looking submission. A man Tone was back after this, reminding us that on Dynamite tonight, we are going to start the tag team tournament, and that is going to be exciting. And then we launch into our main event, which was SCU taking on Luchasaurus, my man, Marco Sunt, and Jungle Boy. You already know this was a lot of damn fun. Give it up. Obviously, a rematch from All Out, which ain't too bad on a random YouTube show. It started with Christopher Daniels and Marco Stunt dancing on each other's backs. So if you were ever worried that AEW was going to be too serious, you had no reason to worry. And yes, before you ask, Jim Ross did keep calling Jungle Boy, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. That's just what he's going to do, all right? We're just going to have to accept it. That is his real name. If that's what JR wants to do, that's what JR is going to do. I mean, I would appreciate it if he didn't say that every time, because then it gets a bit like, oh, it's Bray Wyatt the Fiend, the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt the Fiend. As you know, I can't stand that, but at least he's calling him Jungle Boy and not Jungle Jack. That is called progress. That is called evolution. Never forget, that's a mystery. Luchasaurus once again looked like a million bucks as soon as he got in the ring, and the crowd absolutely loves him, but that didn't compare to Marco Stunt going to crossbody Scorpio Sky and just bouncing off him and falling on the floor. I mean, that is probably what would happen in a real fight. The size difference there was absolutely ridiculous. And it was Marco that dropped the ball here as well, because even though he was able to escape out of a BME attempt, it wasn't enough, because SCU did that crazy power bomb backbreaker, backcracker thing that they do, and it allowed Frankie Kazarian to pin Marco stunt, which means if you are keeping count, and you should, because this is AEW where wins and losses matter, that is SCU 2. The Lucha Express, or whatever the hell they're calling themselves, nothing. That's a worry, because we love them, and we want them to do well. Jurassic Express. The Jurassic Express, I said the Lucha Express, because I've got Lucha Brothers on my mind. I, of course, meant the Jurassic Express. Jurassic. And then AEW Dark was over. That was that. It was finished. And I tell you, it's just like a nice little thing that you're able to do now on Tuesday evenings, should you so wish. And really, if it does get a big audience, All Elite Wrestling can probably get quite creative with this. 
maybe put some angles on there or put some bigger matches on there. I mean, everybody has access to YouTube. You can mention it on Dynamite. It's just a way to expand what you're doing, again, as long as there is an audience to watch it. I'm all for it. Well, it was quite fun. Nice thing to do when I wake up on a Wednesday morning. Obviously, you saw SmackDown. Now I can watch AEW Dark. And eventually, my entire life, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, will just be watching the art, the sport of professional wrestling. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about AEW Dark. Like, share, and subscribe. And over to whatculture.com. Read yourself some articles. Follow what culture on Twitter, whatculture, WWE. Watch more videos here on what culture wrestling, a lot of which are about The Fiend vs. Seth Rollins. You know you still want to talk about it. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll be back in around about 24 hours when we up those downs for AEW Dynamite.